Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News, and we are here in our mobile studio in New York City. And by the way, the audio is not bad for all those out there. Well, we travel with our microphones. How does this sound, folks? All right, we've got Caitlin Bristow from the Off the Vine podcast. She's got an Instagram call-out today of some trolls. Caitlin Bristow is probably the closest of anyone in Bachelor Nation that is willing to spar with a troll online, expose them, and we love that. We, you know, These online trolls are just uh, unfair fettered with their hatred. She says it's sad they are this angry. And also, Caitlin mentions that the reason she believes trolls act the way they are is because they're jealous for what she has. But she says it in a way that makes perfect sense. I mean, anyone who's thriving in life isn't looking in, a, in someone else's lane. The only people that are looking in someone else's lane are those that aren't doing as well as that other person. So someone had commented on her Instagram and said, what percentage plastic are you? Would you melt near a fire? And <laughs> And Caitlin Bristow uh, puts a match up to her to her cheek and does an experiment to see if she melts under fire. So stick around to see the results of that experiment. But first, I wanted to share with you, of course, a couple clips from my interview I did with Caitlin. As you guys know, I mainly on this channel report on other people's interviews. So it's not too often that I get to open up in like a 90-minute conversation and share a little bit about my life. If you haven't already... I really do encourage you to check this conversation out. It was a real great chance to, to to talk to somebody about the inner workings of Bachelor Nation. I've got so much appreciation for what Caitlin has done with her career. You have to remember, when she had her season of The Bachelorette, she was slut-shamed to high heavens by people. She... The, the world that we know it now was different several years ago, and she didn't have a lot of the protections that a lot of people have now, and she was made to look uh, really, in, in just really, um, uh, I don't know, like a like a real bad person, and, and, and it couldn't be farther from the truth. She's come out shining, but it's, it's because of a lot of work she's done. Here's just a quick clip, clip of my appreciation for her, and then after this, I'm going to get into right here, she shares and exposes these private DMs. So stick around for that moment, but first have a quick listen to uh, some more inspirational aspects of our interview. Here's what I here's what I love about having followed your career is to hear your story. It's a nice t-shirt. You know, working in the restaurant world. Mm -hmm. Most people in restaurants are trying to do other things, and I found this through other gigs that I've done, and there is this, you, you can get stuck in, in restaurants that are high paying, like if you're a bartender, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's hard to, to break out of yeah. that. And then, what, what, from at least what I've heard from your story, you had that moment where you 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 hit critical mass, and you're like, I guess I'm done with that. Yeah, yeah. I honestly, I could have kept like working my way up. I, I eventually was like, well, I guess, you know, if all else fails, I'll just be the GM of a restaurant. But I knew like my soul knew that that is not what I was meant to do. I knew I could. I learned so much over the 11 years of working in the restaurant business, but I just knew that wasn't like my legacy. That's not like what I was put here on this planet to do. And I just feel like it's, it's people, people underestimate their intuition and their passion for something. And people think you have to have these business degrees or, you know, all this education to do what you want to do. People think you need to learn good. Caitlin here, just, I mean, I get goosebumps listening to it. Uh, you know, we use the mantra, leap in the net will appear. Like she said, she could have been a GM at a restaurant, which is fine if that's what you want to do. But people underestimate their own self-worth, what they're capable of, their entrepreneurship, their original ideas and creativity. And she's living proof of somebody who leapt in the net did appear and now she is thriving. With that thriving comes dealing with a lot of hate out there. Here's another clip. And by the way, I want to thank you guys for all the positive comments. 132 comments and counting from all of you guys on this YouTube video. Look, she's interviewed celebrities. I'm not a celebrity. She's interviewed Derek Huff. It has 14 comments. Some other gigantic comedians like Hannah Burner and other people that tour nationally. Dozens of comments. The fact that you guys saw this as such a win for our channel speaks to me. And it's a virtual hug from you guys to me. You know, I like words of affirmations. So thank you so much for proving that we have a position at that table. Uh, uh, truly, uh, I thank you for that. And here is what we had to say regarding the trolls that exist and her unwillingness to let... And I and I agree with Caitlin here that if, if you want to expose a troll, I call it troll patrol, get out there, troll on. Because a lot of these trolls don't understand that they are as hurtful as they are, believe it or not. Have a listen. You got trolled on 
your social media. YouTube seems to be kind of a scary place for trolls. You know what? My my YouTube's pretty good, but it nice. did get to a size where there is some hate out there. But it's not attached. I don't, it almost it almost sucks more when it's like you can click on someone and you can see like their history. Yeah. And that that makes me feel like it's real. Mm. I never once in over a decade in stand up felt a certain way from a comment. Only through the, the through the bachelor audience did it feel like it hit personal. And we fought, I mean, like you learn, you sometimes you'll fight with someone. And we had my, this, this one, my, what my wife, when we were just dating before we got engaged, posted something, you know, supporting a political candidate. It was 2016. Right. And someone commented on it. You're not hot enough to have a political opinion. <laughs> I, I, because they were like posted a bikini photo that was like, we support this person. It was like a cute, cheeky thing. And I went down the rabbit hole. We found out this guy was a coach at a college football program. We messaged him, his wife, his daughter, being like, do you support this? We not we didn't publicly shame him. We just went after him and they all sided with him and whatever. And it went back and forth. And, it, and like we like. I was like, I'm going to start commenting on this guy's high school football or his college football <laughs> roster. Like, you're not hot enough to score touchdowns. Yeah. Whatever, just really. And I was like, oh, I can't be doing this anymore. Oh, because that gets that's a slippery slope. That's very fun. But then to a certain point, you're like, well, now I'm just I'm I say this on the podcast. I'm all about sinking to their level. I really am. Once in a while, I like to go down to that level and just like do a little jab back and be like, mm, that felt really good. For example, the other day, this lady was like, you've got so many mental health issues and uh, it's no surprise that you're posting about being depressed again. And, and by the way, Caitlin is so brave for talking about her mental health struggle. To think that Caitlin's got more mental health problems than somebody else, there's just so many people that don't discuss their issues. They rather comment negative things on other people's pages. It's, it's, it's like with stand-up comedy. So many people think that comedians are out of their mind because they share their deep and dark secrets. And no, they're just sharing what, a lot, what just about everyone thinks, which is we've all got a dark place we go to We've all got self-hatred and things we need to work on. We all need therapy. Uh, we are not alone in this battle. No, she just like went off mm. and I looked at her page and she had her beautiful daughter as her profile picture. And her bio was just, I'm a mom. And I said, please do better for your daughter. Like I said, I just showed this to my mom and thanked her for raising me right to not bully other people with mental health mm. and do better for your daughter. And usually they'll come back or apologize or clap back silence and i was like i think that one hit <laughs> and that felt really good <laughs> yeah it i mean you just and as i mentioned i love when i get the caitlin bristow laugh where she goes ah you know a very funny laugh a unique there uh so caitlin said not uh not opposed to sinking to other people's levels and then we discussed of course the fact and i'm going to share this this dm that she had in a second but we discussed the fact that um i talked about brianna madia media and uh, is it madia or media uh she was a new york times bestseller and she continues to hold haters accountable she has lawsuits planned she essentially found the uh, the names and professions and where they live, not not sharing their addresses of 200 of her Reddit haters, hired an inf hired a detective to get revenge. Just about anybody who's ever had any internet hate has sided with Brianna here and said, "Oh my gosh, this is amazing." It levels the playing field. Oh, but you're a public figure. You're asking for it. I mean, it's so there's so much victimization here of 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 the people that are targets of the bullying that I think it's actually a great thing that there's more transparency and less anonymity online what's the matter bully you're afraid that you're going to be exposed for your actions actions have consequences there have been no consequences on the internet till private investigators have gotten involved so anyway i'm going to share also what one of katie's uh, i'm sorry what of brianna maddie's friends has shared after listening to my podcast she actually they're, they're not done they're listening to what we're talking about because we're supporting the fact that um that there is a movement for more transparency out there but first here's what Caitlin had to say. So she had these comments. She posted this last night. She, she got a comment that said, you're so ugly. And then she got another comment that says, your face, and by the way, they spelled you're wrong. Your face is plastic. Don't go near a fire. And this is from Elizabeth underscore 25035, uh, probably a burner account. And then Caitlin responded to it. So let me make sure I didn't miss anything else. So here's Caitlin, and then let's go to her response here. So she got that, and then the person also says, WTF, are you wearing? What percentage plastic are you? Would you melt near a fire? And uh, she said, gonna test this theory, stand by. Okay, just uh, doing a little myth busters over here. 
And if you're listening to the podcast, Caitlin said she's doing a little myth busters here and she's holding up a match next to her cheek to see if she combusts in flames or maybe melts. I don't know if she would combust in flames or melt, but here's the response. Crazy. Busted a myth. Busted a myth. So there it is, folks, using sarcasm and uh, exaggeration to prove uh, her haters wrong. We love to see it. And then, uh, so here's a different Katie, Boo-A. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. She promoted my um, my podcast, Bachelor Rush Hour, and she says, P.S., if you think I forgot, I didn't. I never will. But I choose to keep my peace. If I am ever harassed or stalked online again... I will send the screenshots to your employers and husbands. And of course, this is a response to we aired Becca Martinez, who had a troll, and she found out that the troll was messaging her during normal business hours and messaged the troll. And the troll, of course, was connected to their LinkedIn and said, and, and Becca Martinez had commented to the troll's uh, HR department where they work and said, hey, just so you know, there's I'm being harassed by this employee of yours. It's probably happening during your business hours. Do with this what you may. And <laughs> I think it's great. And then Katie, listen to it. Again, Katie is friends. Now, now, now just follow the story. Katie is friends with Brianna Madia. They were part of that same private investigator. She says, I will never forget stalkers claiming they didn't stalk me, as if I didn't have screenshot evidence of everything I was terrorized by. The gaslight of it all. And then she posts the screen grabs. Nobody shared her, her address. Jesus Christ. The Discord may have been a sort of lawless place, but we never did that. Same rules here apply to the Discord. So people saying, well, we never doxed them. We never shared their address. Address. And then there it is. Um, thanks to, uh, you know, I saw their house listing. And, and so th th these are comments of people that shared a house listing for these people they were bullying. So imagine being bullied and also finding the house of the place that you're bullying. I mean, it's kind of scary stuff and it's lawless that's going on out there. And look, me personally, would I ever care if someone was like, I know where Dave lives? No, but then I have to think about my wife. I have to think about my touring schedule. Oh, I'm out of town for shows and there are bullies that know where we live. No thanks, folks. Not on my watch. Not gonna happen. Come find me at a show if you disagree with an opinion. Talk. Uh, argue the point, not the person. But when it comes to Caitlin Bristow here, dealing with people saying her face is going to melt, yes, that troll should be exposed. Wouldn't it be nice if you owned a company to find out that your employee was sending these hateful messages? What if that lady who's sending that to Caitlin is a nanny? What if she's a teacher? What if she's in a position where she's uh, writing legislation in a local town? These people that exist out there need to understand their actions have consequences. We love seeing people like Caitlin Bristow and Brianna and Katie Bue and Becca Martinez fighting that fight. It doesn't go unnoticed. Let me know what you guys think. If you want to listen to that full episode with Caitlin Bristow, I would love if this episode becomes her most watched video. Um, she's got some big ones out there. I'm no Gabby Windy. I wasn't on Bachelorette. I didn't compete on Dancing with the Stars, but I think I have a story worth listening to. So go check that out if you want to. We'll be back more uh, with Bachelor Rush Hour this afternoon.